everybody. Welcome. Uh, my name is Claire. I'm with uh, the Head and Forest Home Team Barrett Realty Advantage. And uh, Kelly and I were introduced through uh, a Facebook page, actually. And when I was looking for somebody to talk about health and well-being coaching, uh, Kelly and I spoke and what she said just absolutely resonated with me. She has a very holistic perspective, uh, very uh, a much about systems around living a healthy lifestyle. And I don't know about you, but every year I make resolutions and by about the third week of January, I'm really struggling to keep them. So I thought she would be a really great speaker for this time of year. Uh, so typically people buy a lot of workout equipment and uh, they fill their fridge with healthy foods and by now they're collecting dust and going rotten. So <laughs> uh, Kelly is, uh, is a health and wellness coach and uh, comes her great testimonials. So go to her website. Uh, but we're going to ask you some questions. So welcome, Kelly. And how are you today? And we're frozen. This is not good. Maybe I'll have to do this all by myself. I'm not good at coaching health and wellness. I can start off with maybe telling a little bit about myself to introduce. That would be great. Am I frozen? Oh, we're having technical difficulties. I, can you hear me? Yeah, uh, Sally? Yeah, Kelly isn't very clear and she's the one that's mute. I, I can hear you and you've been great all along. But, um, <laughs> okay. Maybe Kelly might like she's was kind of blurry. Okay, and now well, I she's hear it all. yeah, now she's gone. So she's not on mute. I know that for sure. Uh, unfortunately, we are only as oh, there we go. Kelly unmute there. We're only as good as our internet connection lately. Yeah, I think we're good. <laughs> I switched. I switched there we to go. Internet. Okay, there we go. Let's try, okay. again. Let's try this again. You know what? Second time's a charm. That's right, exactly. That's right. So, so tell yeah, us all so, about you. Yeah, so I am, uh, obviously I am a health, and co health coach, wellness coach. I wear a lot of hats, so to speak. So uh, I started my journey in the fitness industry about 22 years ago where I was a personal trainer. And I was always super passionate about fitness and healthy, a healthy lifestyle. So I was always, always sort of had my foot in the door. And what I struggled with was that a lot of people knew what to do sort of over the years, right? <laughs> um, certainly more so now. Um, but what I learned a lot of was that people didn't really know how to put it into action. Mm. And so that's sort of where I struggled over the years. And I really helped my personal training clients uh, with new strategies, new systems in order to sort of make their overall lifestyle a healthier one versus just exercise. And so a couple of years ago, I kind of, I was of course enjoying my personal training uh, clientele that I have and still do have, but I kind of was looking for a little bit something different. And I knew I wanted to get into more food and sort of the overall healthy uh, lifestyle that, that everyone mm -hmm. should lead. And so I sort of felt like there was something missing there. And what I felt was missing was habit change. And so I started doing some research and I came across the Health Coach Institute, which is a world renowned recognized um, certification program. And they really focused on helping people with habit change. And so that was really, really important to me. And so that's sort of the route that I took about just over two years ago now. And so I've kind of, you know, taken my business and sort of made it into sort of more of a whole, shall we say. Mm -hmm. And so I work one-on-one -on -one with, with uh, women. I work one-on-one -on -one with couples and uh, families as well. And uh, recently due to the pandemic, I've uh, opened my business up as accountability groups. And so since March, I've been running accountability groups every eight weeks. And that has really, really been amazing. Thank goodness for that. Because <laughs> uh, that has sort of helped me get through this time, let's be honest. So yeah, so that's kind of a little bit about me. And uh, so now I run my personal training clients, my health coaching clients, everybody's on Zoom or we're on the phone or we're trying to make do here. Yeah, yeah. And it's funny, um, I, I'm reading a book right now um, and it's all about habit building. And the reality is, is that if we build, incorporate, or we learn to incorporate good habits in one aspect of our life, like you said, it kind of blossoms across everything. Uh, and Absolutely. I think that your health and well being. Um, actually makes it a lot easier for us to, to, to actually sustain good habits in other aspects. So whether you're a business person or an entrepreneur, 
uh, whatever the case may be, it, it just, it works out. And I can see Natalie Gonzalez and she is on her treadmill listening to this, which is awesome. <laughs> Hi, Natalie. <laughs> Super oh, that's great. awesome. Okay. So uh, let's start off with some first questions. So what in your experience, what are some of the biggest challenges in sticking to a healthy lifestyle change? Yeah, that's a great one to start with. So here's the thing, people, January 1st comes, right? And they have these grandiose plans, like you mentioned before. And I think what happens is people do exactly like you said, I'm going to work out every day and I'm going to drink water and I'm going to eat vegetables only. And then all of a sudden, a few weeks later, it goes kaput. <laughs> so that's, that's part of the problem, so to speak probably most of the problem. Um, and so I think what happens is that people just don't really have a plan, right? So self-sabotage mm. without a plan, it just kicks right in so quick. And I think that's where people really struggle. And I think that's where people have found some, some real results in meeting me or, or really any coach um, in terms of being able to get past that. So mm. I feel like what happens is I sit down with people and I sort of help them come up with a plan. And that plan is one where we break it down into smaller pieces. So we start to look at, okay, what is it that your overall goal is? And so they'll say, most of them lose weight. And I'll say, okay, amazing goal. However, that doesn't just happen overnight, right? So we wanna break that down. And so I'll work with them and their lifestyle, which I think is really, really important to point out everyone has a different lifestyle. And so I try to sort of pinpoint what will work for them versus what won't work for them in their lifestyle. And so by adding in smaller goals with mm -hmm. them and sort of starting with just one goal for the first week and building off of that, I feel like people feel more successful and they're mm -hmm. able to continue that one habit and form that into a habit loop. And that's what I talk a lot about is, is forming a habit loop. So I would sit down with someone, for example, they say they want to lose 20 pounds. Amazing. We, could, well, we will get you there. Step one, we're going to look at having three balanced plates of food per day. Simple, basic, start there. So in that process, I then teach them about what a healthy balanced plate looks like. And again, this is something I also offer in my accountability groups, which has been fantastic because we're starting to learn about what a balanced plate looks like. Mm -hmm. People will come to me and be like, but Kelly, I ate oatmeal for breakfast. And I'm like, uh-huh. And you were hungry an hour later because your plate wasn't balanced. And that's the biggest struggle, right? And so it's really trying to take a look at not only the balanced plate, but a balanced plate with no processed foods involved in it as much as possible. So I also factor that in. So it's really not about a diet or a quick fix it really truly is with me a healthier lifestyle. So we choose small changes throughout the weeks together. We encourage you in slower increments to find those small habits, change them slowly through strategies and systems in order to propel you to feel good so mm -hmm. that you don't get that self-sabotage sucking you in like it does everybody else. And I think that's really what's most important there. And again, I think you mentioned a book you were reading, perhaps it's James Clear. It is. It's it is, my so. third time reading it. It's the yeah. best, the best the book best. ever. Yeah. Yeah. And so he really says a habit has to be established before it can be improved. And I think that's really important. And again, this is something I do in my groups as well. We do little tiny challenges in the group. Mm -hmm. And by doing those little challenges with everyone, for example, three balanced plates per day, and then you show them on the group, it's, it's, it's really establishing that habit versus seeking and always trying to do something bigger and better. It's not about that. It's, it, right. you know, we want to just keep it simple. It's not about perfection in the beginning. It's just about forming little new habits that gradually pro will propel you towards the overall healthy lifestyle that we're looking for. Yeah. Yeah. And, and one of the things that when we, when we first spoke that I loved is you use the word system. And again, you know, to relate back to that to atomic habits book, you know, it's, it's, uh, I like, I find it very difficult to lose weight because I stand on the scale every day. And every day I get this affirmation that I'm not losing weight or I'm losing yes. very little weight. And it's coming from a, a place of lack. Whereas mm. if you, if you focus on, 
um, and I, I learned this from talking to you, that if you focus on managing the system, the weight will come. And so, totally. you know, you, 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 you focus on the things that you can control. I can't yes. control how fast my body's going to lose weight, but I can control what I choose to put in it. And I think that that's, that's a big differentiator. So fantastic. Yeah. Okay. So what are some of the best strategies that you have implemented uh, to overcome these challenges, these self-sabotage that we all, we all seem to fall into? We all seem to follow into it. So I think, again, like I mentioned before, is really taking those goals and breaking them down. Something simple to start off with. So one thing that I talk to, to my clients about and my um, accountability group about is planning meal prep on Sundays. I can't say this enough. Sunday, <laughs> Sunday. And nobody wants to do it. But let me tell you, I have 81 women on this accountability group and they're like, Kelly, you were right. <laughs> I'm so glad I did that. So I think that's really important. So again, there's simple strategies that I implement. Uh, one of them in my house that's amazing is just this little whiteboard. It has every day of the week. I write down the dinners because the dinners for me are less of a habit, right? Mm -hmm. So again, because I've been doing this so long, breakfast, lunch, no issue. That's like brushing my teeth for me. I will never stray from those. I'll always choose clean. Dinners, sometimes you get a bit of the laziness coming on, right? You're mm -hmm. juggling your kids off to extracurriculars. You're, you're just busy. So you start to get a bit of, a bit of the, oh, oh, who cares? I'll just throw in a grilled cheese, right? So none of that. The family knows. And then the great thing about this, and it's so silly, but like it's a whiteboard and there's the grocery list. So if the kids say, mom, we don't have any avocados, I just tell them go right mm -hmm. on the whiteboard. Mom, what's for dinner? Go look at the whiteboard. So this, this is a strategy that sort of I've implemented since the pandemic because everyone's home and they're driving me crazy. But <laughs> um, so this has been a great, a great tool. One of the strategies that's really helped my family. Another strategy, obviously, when we, when we talk about meal prep on Sundays is having systems, right? So I think that's a big thing for me. And without a system, you, you're not going to get that progress that you're looking for, right? So one item that really sort of helped me, again, this is funny, it's all in the pandemic because I'm not sure what changed because I, I don't know what happened. But this is, again, it's a container oh. and it has all these little areas and all you do is you flip it up and there's where you put your produce. So what I do on Sundays, and again, we implement this as a family, ideally, when we when possible, we're all home anyways, um, this will have all fruits and vegetables in it. And so my kids are like, mom, I'm hungry. I'm like, get the container. And again, simple, simple strategy, right? Mm -hmm. And so this is usually empty by Wednesdays in my house, sometimes before that. So I, again, my kids are 15, 14, oh, almost 15 and 10 so they're they're quite capable right and again mm -hmm. because i've built the habit over the years of, of a healthy lifestyle this isn't so shocking for them they actually mm -hmm. don't have to ask they just go and get it so again small little changes right like get the container and start with that it doesn't have to be this grandiose thing right get the container for yourself fill it for yourself then gradually implement the family same thing even with the dinners and I talk a lot about this in, in, my, in my practice is it's really important to set intentions, right? If you go to bed the night before and you don't leave your workout clothes laid out, the chances <laughs> you're going to work out are smaller, right? I'm wondering if I can sleep in mine. <laughs> right. Oh, you're not the first client. <laughs> Literally, I sleep in mine clients. so I don't have to think about it in the morning. <laughs> yeah, she would come at 6 a.m. And, and she would have slept in her workout clothes. Oh, yeah. I loved it. So, um, so yeah, I think again, by setting your intentions, you're able to commit to them more. And again, for, for what I have seen with my clients is that writing it down is really, really important. And so for me, I know exactly what I am going to eat the day before I eat it. And I kid you not, that is a habit for me. I anticipate it the day before it isn't work anymore. And I think sometimes yeah. people get a little bit freaked out by that. Because they're like, well, Kelly, then I'm always thinking about food, which I get. That's fair, right? I don't want to, I don't want them to have to, to have that. But that is the reality is that it becomes such a habit that you don't, right. you no longer 
is it a stressful thing? It's actually quite pleasurable because you're organized and prepared for the day in advance to the day. So I think that's really, really important. So I do recommend that people write out their intentions. They write it out with whatever that looks like for them. But in the beginning, it might just be one intention right? Exactly. Exactly. And that's the problem that people don't do. They're like, well, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do I'm like, no, 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 no. So in the accountability group, the first week, we really tried to keep it basic. And one of the, cha- one of the, um, the, in this accountability group, we really pushed it this time because it was January, right? So people are really keen. So what we decided to do was a no processed foods for five days. So wow. everyone had, yeah, tough, right? And so I went to my family and I said, hey, listen, here's what I'm going to do for five days. What do you think of doing it? And they were all on board. And if you can believe it, my children did no processed foods for five days. It was pretty remarkable. And again, I think that just goes to show you the power of of, Mm -hmm. of believing in what I'm selling, (laughs) so to speak, right? Like they, they said things to me at the end of those five days, like, mom, I just feel better. I feel Mm -hmm. more energy. I just feel good. Like I'm proud of myself. So like those little things, they, they wear off, it wears off, right? They see how good Mm -hmm. I feel when I eat a certain way and they want to feel that way too. And so I think that's important again, leading by example. I could go on and on about that, but let's go back to strategies. Um, So another thing that I think is really, really important is finding a, finding a buddy, right? A lot of the times people they, because they, A, they haven't told anyone that they're doing this. So there's less accountability already from the get-go, right? Mm-hmm. And so self-sabotage comes in a lot quicker. Um, so I think the buddy is really, really huge, whether it could be your kid, right? Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be- No better big. accountability partner than your right? children. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. They're Because they're looking, they're watching you. <laughs> Exactly. Like hawks all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, so I think that's great. And and again, that's where I come into play. So a lot of my clients say to me, Kelly, you were the missing link to my puzzle because I was just missing that accountability that I needed. And so that has been really, really amazing to watch because um, people know what to do. They don't do it. They need accountability. Bottom line, it's just what we require in order to form the habit loop and continue it. Yeah, and yeah. so I think that's really important. I, I think uh, you know, I have to excuse me. My dogs are wrestling right beside me. This is the the new the new norm. Uh, hopefully, they're not too loud. Um, it, it, one of the things that you that really struck me was you said you know even you like breakfast is a habit, lunch is a habit, but dinner isn't. And I think the difference between having a resolution and living a healthy lifestyle is you don't have to decide when you go to the fridge anymore that you're gonna grab something healthy. It's just your innate reaction to something. Uh, And whether it's your business or it's your sales or it's how you treat your kids, how you treat your spouse. um, The reality is, is when something is new, it is like pushing a boulder up a hill. So try not to make the boulder too big. I think, and I think this is why your clients speak so highly about you, Kelly, and why you have so much success is because you allow them definitely that when it's, the bigger the transition the smaller the rock I think you need to go after in the beginning and I think that's what you're saying yeah yeah this is why I like you so much Uh, okay (laughs) so next question um what are the parts okay so you know new year's comes around or any time of year you know bathing suit season's coming around or whatever and we say okay we want to lose weight and it's always about the weight especially with women it's always about the weight um, but there, a healthy lifestyle and a healthy identity, let's call it a healthy identity, is so much more than that. So what are some of the other parts that we can be looking to not tackle all at once, but break down to create a healthy lifestyle? Yeah, I like what you just said there. Um, I also think people give themselves an identity. Like, oh, I've tried this before. It didn't work. I suck. I'm a, I'm a self-sabotager. And so they, they create this identity in, their self, in themselves mm-hmm. before they've even started. And then it's like they can't, they can't give that up. They have to let that go before any of this is actually going to stay. So they need to, ch- again, change the mindset of that feeling. And so that's another area that I focus on with clients is like, what are you telling yourself when you get up in the morning? When you look in the mirror, what is the messaging? 
Because if the messaging isn't positive, guess what's going to happen? Self-sabotage, right? So I do think that's really, really important. Um, but um, some of the things, so there's sort of four things that I focus on with, with my clients. Um, obviously, I mentioned already the balanced plates. What I have learned the hard way is that we are carboholics, <laughs> right? We love carbs. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, and again, it's like, it's like, then people are like, oh, I'm going to go no carbs. And I'm like, no, 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 no. We're going to talk about balancing it out. So we need to fuel the body properly. And this isn't, this doesn't mean that I'm going to be like counting your calories or counting the macros on your plates. No, no, no. Again, this is a lifestyle that we look at a plate and we go, oh yeah, there's the protein, there's the fat, and there's the carbohydrate. Check, check, check. Kelly approved, done. So I work with my clients. They call it Kelly approved. A lot of them. I love that. Um, I work with them on just educating them. And again, I'm not a, I'm not a dietitian. I'm someone who's super passionate about clean, wholesome food, not foods with all these crazy ingredients lists. That's not me, which is why I didn't actually go that route because that's another story. Um, so the things that I focus on, there's four. The balance plate would be the first one that we would focus on usually in the beginning because that is mostly usually the problem. Uh, so again, educating them about how to have a balanced plate. Mm -hmm. Then we talk about intentional movement. So again, like I mentioned before, I am an exerciser. I exercise five to six days a week. It's a habit, but I enjoy it. And so for a lot of people, when I first meet them, they're like, I don't exercise and I don't like it. I'm like, no problem. It doesn't have to be this big, crazy workout. So we start with 20 minutes of, of movement a day, like small, little changes. And again, we may not have implemented that in the beginning, that's later. So again, it's really important to slowly implement these small changes. So intentional movement is important. Um, water intake, really important, something that gets forgotten about all the time. So I teach them the importance of water. It is always by my side. Again, habit, it's massive. One of the strategies that really works well, and again, I don't need it anymore because this is a habit like brushing my teeth. They put elastic bands around their water bottle. And for me, it's three of these a day. Every time I do drink one, the elastic band comes off. Simple, little strategy works. So again, forms the habit loop, right? Because you're taking mm -hmm. off the thing, you feel proud that you took it off, refill the water bottle. It continues that habit loop, which we talked about. And then the fourth thing is sleep. And I do think sleep is really, really important. Stress is another one. But by implementing those four things, so the balanced plate, the intentional movement, water, and sleep, mm -hmm. stress naturally goes down is what I've seen in my practice. So I think that is really important. I try to talk to people, go to bed at the same time, get up at the same time, simple little habits. Um, again, there's other things that I implement as well. Like people are like, well, Kelly, what do I do when I'm, when I want a snack at eight o'clock? First of all, are you hungry? Well, no. Okay. Then it's a habit that we need to change. We need to break mm -hmm. that one. Unfortunately, we got to let that one go. Right. <laughs> so some of the strategies that we have found have worked is you go upstairs and you brush your teeth and you wash your face. So it's almost signaling to yourself the kitchen is closed. And again, in my accountability group and with my clients, I literally send the messages. Okay. It's seven o'clock. Like the kitchen's closed now. So, so do whatever you need to do. If you need to go wash your face and brush your teeth, go do it now. And so again, that habit loop will continue. And I think that's really what, what's important is, is continuing those small little wins, right? Small wins bring yep. the big victory in the end. Yeah. And, and one of the things that I'm picking up on, again, this is the second time talking to you, is um, your accountability groups, they make it fun. Yeah. And they make it a collaboration and you're not alone in it. And by not being alone in it, and in any situation that is difficult, I think when you have people who, who, you, who are relating to you, all of a sudden you're like, okay, I'm not alone. But also you have people who are like, okay, they did it, so, so can I. Absolutely. And that is really good. That's really true. And so that's why these, these challenges, these little challenges I run, people are responsible to post pictures and stuff. 
And I have so many women that reach out to me that aren't posters, like they don't post on face on the group at all. They're shy, but they're like, oh my gosh, I love that challenge, Kelly. I may not be posting, but I feel encouraged by what everybody else is posting. So I yeah. think that's absolutely true. And that's the nice part about my group, I think, is that it's, there is some, some anonymity to it in the sense that you can be a, an observer and watch what's happening and just take the tools or you can be mm -hmm. right involved in all the challenges and posting mm -hmm. and da, 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 da. So there's a nice balance there, which I think is really what's worked so well for us. Yeah. And, and I think if COVID has taught us anything is that so many of our systems are actually externally created for us. Like I was, I'll be the first to admit, like I was training for a marathon. I was going to the running room three times a week. I was loving it. I was doing blogs going, I'm a runner. Yay. And COVID hit. And all of a sudden my system, which was going to the running room. Okay. It's a running room day. Today I run was pulled out from underneath me. And I, and I just, I, I completely lost it. And I keep trying to get back on track, but I, that, that system yeah. was being created by somebody else and not by myself. Yeah. And um, I think we've learned now that we have to, we have to have some um, internal systems as well uh, Absolutely. That, that just trigger us to do, to make these choices. Okay. Next question. So, um, <laughs> All right. So, and you hit the nail on the head here. You, your kids have been raised with a healthy eating lifestyle. They have had model uh, models and systems around them for exercising in my house. It is not like that. Uh, I will be the first to admit, but I do have one son who works out every single day and he goes to the fridge and it's never a question. He always grabs healthy things. I don't know where he got it from because it wasn't for me. <laughs> it's a way he does. It's a win. He did it for himself. So, but it is considerably harder to implement these things and to create these systems when you have a spouse or kids who are not, they're not on board. So what can you do if you're like one or two of five people in your house who've committed to being, to, to, to a more healthy lifestyle? How, do, how can you overcome that? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, again, that is definitely something that I struggle with, of course. Um, I have two daughters and a husband and they like their treats and their snacks and all this and that. So I, I still struggle sometimes for sure. Um, but we do make deals. We definitely make deals. So we, through the pandemic, have done one order in night for sure every week. So that's on the calendar. That's written down. And that's agreed upon in the beginning. So again, intentions are set, right? Because that's go. a habit, right? Mm -hmm. So it just reiterates, okay, Sunday is skip the dishes or whatever. And so I think that's definitely important. You need to have plan as a family. And again, it doesn't have to be like, you can't eat this, right? It's more just about educating them about why maybe they don't want to eat that. So a lot of the times my kids will pull something or say, mom, can we order this from the grocery store? And, and I'll say, well, let's look at the ingredients list. And again, it's not about, well, this has this many calories and this has this much fat. Mm -hmm. My kids don't even know about a nutrition label. What they know about is ingredients. So it's about breaking down an ingredients list and educating them why I would not choose that food for them. So I'm not teaching them, oh, you're going to get fat, or this is about weight, because it's not. This has nothing to do with that. This is about learning what's in some of these products. And so that's a place where we've started from over the years. Um, another thing that we do is we do things together. And again, we're all home, right? And yep. everybody wants to sit on their devices. So this is, <laughs> this is drives me crazy. So, um, so Sundays, like I mentioned before, we do try to do some meal prep together. That's important. We play some fun music. We, we do some chopping together. We throw it all into the container together. We commit to that together. Another thing that we do is we pick the recipes together. So dinners, we decide on to, as a family. And so in, Janu in January, I was trying to get my family, like I said, more involved in, in the prep work in the dinners because that was the struggle. Because normally they wouldn't be around because they're off at extracurriculars and my husband works in Toronto so he was never around so I was doing everything and then the pandemic hit and we're all home so what we decided to do in January was order from one of those um hello fresh chef's mm -hmm. plate one of those and just experiment a little bit with foods 
And to be honest, that's been really, really great for us because I'm able to, there, it comes with the recipe card, it comes with the food. And then I take that and I healthify it, so to speak. Oh. <laughs> so I don't necessarily use everything that's on there. So again, might be wasting a little bit, but at the same time I save what I, what I didn't use and maybe I'll, so if it's a spice blend that I really don't know what's in that spice blend, I'll maybe use a quarter of it on the, on the dinner and I'll save it for another time. And again, it's not perfect, right? Those aren't mm -hmm. perfect meals according to my standards, which I know are high, but it's progress for my family. And I think again, that's really important. They are, they're eating these meals and we're having wins. And those little wins are making everybody more interested in being in the kitchen. And that's been a real big help for us. Um, another thing that we do is we do challenges, like I mentioned together. So I'll just say things like, okay, let's do a water drinking contest. And again, we'll get a whiteboard out. And then every time you drink a bottle, you, so you've got to just make it fun, right? Like who can, who can eat the most celery today? Like it doesn't have to be, you know, it's just implementing little tiny wins. Like, wow, you know, you ate a lot of celery today. Good job. There's a lot of really good vitamins and minerals in celery. It's going to help you grow up healthy and strong. Like it's all about how you present it, right? But if you make them sit down and eat the Brussels sprouts, like the way I was raised, I don't want to eat the Brussels sprouts. Like it's just thrown in front of my face. I had no say in the matter. And I think that's important to get the family involved to make the decisions about the meals together so that they're more on board. So it sounds to me like you're even in, in your own family, it's more, and if you have people who are not on board, you know, you have to learn to compromise um, because they're not, they're not of the same mindset as you are. However, that compromise is, a, they're a lot more willing in that compromise and you have a chance of actually instilling these healthy habits in your kids if you take more of an education. Because I was that kid whose parents said, yeah, you don't leave until your plate is empty. Yeah, me too. And, and that, that's part of my issue now. Like I can't, if there's food on the table, I'm sitting here and I'm mindlessly eating it yeah. because that, that's what I do. That's what I, how I totally. was raised. So if we raise our kids to be aware of healthy as opposed mm -hmm. to requirements. Um, totally I think that like that's, that. yeah. And, and yeah. you know what? And, and again, I think it's, uh, I'm just getting the next question pile up. I think it's no different than, I mean, even in real estate, like I work with a lot of investors and I say, listen, they'll say, well, why would I do this at 50 years old? And I'll say, because you can impart this knowledge to your children that will have generational change. So this isn't just about that. your healthy, this isn't just about your healthy habits. This is about habits in your family for generations. And that's right. And we have a responsibility to some extent. I think we do. And that's a, you've, you've actually said that very well. I couldn't agree with you more. We have a responsibility to teach our children how to be healthy. It's our responsibility yeah. as parents. And yeah. so if we're shoving the, I don't even know, a Joe Louie in front of them, they're going to eat it. They don't know any better. And so I'm going to pull out the ingredients and say, do you know how to say those words? Yeah. Well, no. Then do you think you should eat it? Well, and, and I think I, I like what you said. Like if you tell them that they have to eat Brussels sprouts or they can't eat that, it's not about them making choices. It's about them following rules. And I think that if we want to empower our, I mean, my children are relatively we actually we got we got those boxes over the pandemic as well because I took it as an opportunity to have my children actually cook a meal yes meal instead of just grab and go and it was to create independence so we're giving them this independence but we're not giving them the choice yeah it, it's a mixed message so I, I, I think it's important yeah. yeah and again I think the more power you can give your children the the better right? To make those yeah, choices absolutely. for themselves, but it's up to us to educate them yep. and yep. empower them to want to be better. Let's be honest. This is all about our husbands. Cause my husband is not giving up donuts. He's just not, uh, and then not he brings them in the house. Donuts. He brings them in the house and I'm like, I can't say no. Uh, yeah. but that's my, that's the story in my head. So, well, it's funny okay. because I think my husband decided years ago because he is a chipaholic he decided years ago he's going to only buy the chips that he knows I don't like oh and it's worked because I have no interest in touching that chip bag <laughs> that's pretty good that's pretty good okay so we've got one more um okay so 
this is, and, and again, like I, I'll, I mean, Kelly is absolutely amazing. I am the opposite in the spectrum. I'm probably the person I'm interviewing her because I need this as much as you guys do. Okay. So, <laughs> and definitely the pandemic has done a real number on me. I was slated to turn my healthy lifestyle around and the pandemic came and everything went out the window, but I do know from experience that it is very much in my head. Yeah, it's in my head. So pandemic or not, uh, how does a person overcome the fact that they are so unhealthy to begin with mm -hmm. and their identity is this unhealthy person? How can they, I know you so break it down a little bit and, and everything mm -hmm. else, but if it just seems so daunting. Yeah. And you know what, that's, that's so true. I, I'm currently working with, with two um, women that are, that are really, really um, overweight and I um, my heart goes out to them because I can, I can imagine how hard the first step must be. So what I did with both of them is I connected them with another client of mine who has already lost 63 pounds. So okay. she's one step ahead of them in the sense. So again, I'm building a bit of a community for them of support. So not only do they have me, I, I am coaching them one-on-one, -on -one, these clients, but they also have someone who knows just what they're going through. And so I think that's also really, really important. Like I mentioned, you gotta find a buddy. You gotta find someone who you can bounce your thoughts off with, who's not your husband, because it's not the same. <laughs> someone who you can complain to, who when you're having a weak moment, they're there. Those types of, again, a community. And I love my accountability group for this because if someone has a bad day, they write about it and we pump them back up again. And so there's a sense of community in my group. There's a sense of community now in some of my clients. And I think that that, you've got to start with that. You, we are unfortunately not all wired the same to get to have that motivation to just go on our own. Like if we were, we would all be living a healthy lifestyle and that's not the reality. So I think the biggest thing I would suggest to anyone that's getting started is to find a system, a buddy, an accountability group, something that will help hold them accountable. Mm -hmm. And that has been the biggest piece, I think, for my clients and, and my accountability group as well, would be find a system of people, a tribe, so to speak. And oh. there's lots out there. There's lots out there. And just like you said, you were on such a roll because you had this tribe of I runners. And mm -hmm. so, and so, and I'm sure for you, like, well, when I'm running, when I'm healthy running, I also want to make who's healthier lifestyle choices because I'm already doing that. So it's kind of like, it all starts to come together a little bit in that sense too, I would think. If, if anybody ever wants to watch a movie, um, there's a movie on, I think it's on Amazon prime. It's called Brittany runs a marathon. Oh my gosh, it's hilarious. Have, have you seen that movie? <laughs> yeah. But but the the mindset shift for her, like I totally. I so related to it. Like I was just yeah. I, I my my beginning was I took my daughter to Carlton on a university tour and Carlton is very hilly and I was completely out of breath and I was like, "Oh my god, I'm going to I'm going to have a heart attack and I'm like 49 years old. <laughs> like I got to do so." And and I realized and that's when I started running and I, it's funny because she watches this, you watch this movie and it's not about running a marathon. She starts by walking a yeah. block. Yes. That's it. That's it. And then Love there's that seed where that she's running with the guy and the little toddlers <laughs> are walking by. <laughs> and, she's, and, I, and that's the accountability part and that person who's been on that, that road. And then that one person okay. who maybe is just a step ahead of you on that road, that totally. is the proof that it can be done. And, and I think that that's okay. what I like so much about talking to you is you acknowledge that we're not all wired this way. No. Like I, I am, I, I, right now, my wiring is bagels. Like it just. Yeah, yeah. I was, <sighs> I was, I was wired that way at 19. Too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm not 19 though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
It worked for me and, then. It wouldn't now. Yeah. Okay. So Kelly, this has been really enlightening for a lot of people. Um, however, a lot of us don't have a tribe and this is what you're providing. So can I, I'll, I'll put links and everything when I load this into Facebook, but can you just tell us a little bit of how, if somebody wanted to connect with you and your tribe and your community, how they can do that? Cause you're just, you're yes. amazing. Thank you. Um, so yeah, so I um, have a website, kellygaffey.com. So I'm sure you'll put that up there. Um, people can reach out to me uh, through, uh, we can provide my email. I'm also on Facebook Messenger, just as Kelly Gaffey. Um, definitely start following me. Um, I do, even if you just start there and read through a lot of my old posts, I do think it's quite motivating. So on Instagram, it's Kelly Gaffey Health Coach. And on um Facebook, it's Kelly Gaffey, health coach and personal trainer. And I do, I really believe like even just scrolling through some of them, there's lots mm -hmm. of before and after pictures. There's lots of recipes and motivational phrases mm -hmm. that can sort of just help trigger you to get your head in the game, I think for some people. And, and again, please reach out to me. We have our next group starting on um, February 28th, I think, or March the 1st, right around there will be our next group. Um, not to say that I wouldn't add someone in now to the group that we're in, by all means, of course, we can make that happen. Um, and again, the great part about my group to be a new joiner, it's $99. Like it's so yeah. cheap for what they get. <laughs> you'll probably save that much money on your T Tim Hortons drive throughs because you'll no longer be eating that stuff because you'll have prepped it on Sunday. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> totally. Yeah, yeah so totally. Lots, lots of lots of ways to connect. And I'm more than happy to just chat on the phone with people that they're feeling nervous, uh, you know, and I also offer, like I said, my programs for my health coaching are 90 days and uh, I offer a an intensive program and then a less intensive program there as well. Okay. Well, I, I have to say, um, I'm so glad I connected with you. It was, it was a recommendation through Facebook. Uh, but I just, I really believe, uh, that you are actually, not only do you know what you're doing, but you come from it from a place of, of uh, contribution and pouring into people to make them their best selves. And, and I do really believe that you're, you don't really use the word diet, you use the word healthy and, and intention and mindset. And I think that this is, as I said, everybody, I really truly believe in my experience that if you can tackle uh, one area of your life constructively, then that becomes the habit of handling things constructively. And it just snowballs into so many areas. Um, so, so glad I've connected with you, Kelly. I'm definitely Me gonna too. be looking into your accountability because, awesome. because I know it's the end of January guys, but before you know it, it will be swimsuit season. That's right. <laughs> Hopefully we are vaccinated. So we're going out in public. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers crossed, everyone. Fingers crossed, everybody. Well, listen, uh, Kelly, I would really uh, thank you so much for joining us today. We will be putting this recording uh, onto Facebook as well, um, but I will put links for Kelly's, uh, her website and, and everything else that she can provide. Thank you so much for joining us. You're amazing, amazing, thank amazing. You. And uh, everybody be healthy, be well take care and be safe. And we'll yes. talk to you again soon. Thanks Thank so much. Thank you again, guys. Claire. Appreciate take care. it so much. Oh, my pleasure. Take care. All bye -bye. the best. We'll be in touch. Absolutely. Bye everybody. Okay. Bye.